stuff uh, in the HTML5 is actually in, a, in the next room. In the book, it is the, the room number is swap. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm Hamil Shah. I'm a founder and director of, of eSphere Security uh, and, a, and a key member in, in Blue Infi Solutions, uh, a professional services company into, uh, into application reviews in, uh, based in India. I'm also on an advisory board for, for some of the companies like uh, security exposure and whatnot. Uh, in the past, I, I tweet at, at eSphere Security. Uh, so pretty much the talk is, is, is going to talk, uh, I'm gonna talk about the, the, how do you actually automate the mobile application reviews? Uh, and uh, so who doesn't have mobile apps today? Pretty much. Yeah. So if you look at the book, the smart storage scanning, the description about smart storage scanning is actually written in HTML5. So it is swapped. So the topics which I'm gonna cover is actually written into HTML5, and the HTML5 stuff is, is over here. So it's, it's swapped pretty much. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so pretty much every company out there has a. Sorry? The headline is correct. The, the component, the, yeah, the description is actually swapped, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, who doesn't have the mobile apps today? Pretty much every company has a mobile app. Be, or, or they are making one uh, these days. So if you look at the, some of the industrial stats on which platform has been leveraged more is, if you, uh, if you look at, this is a stats from IDC. If you look at the, the Android, Android is pretty much leading the way with 81% of the devices today leveraging the Android platform. And then the, the following is, is iOS with 15.2%. So if we just sum both of this, this, uh, this platform, it's pretty much more than 95% of the, 95% uh, of, of the coverage onto mobile platform. So then pretty much I can say, you can just avoid the rest of the, rest of the platforms because then there are very less users on those platforms. Uh, the OAPS top 10 stuff, uh, I'm not gonna talk about the OAPS top 10 because there has been already a talk about OAPS top 10. But if, you, if we quickly look at the OAPS top 10, the insecure local storage, uh, the, uh, has been leading uh, pretty much almost 98% of the application has, has insecure data storage, uh, storage vulnerability. Uh, we do this consulting services and uh, almost we test like an, an 50 to 60 application a month. So from our stats, and we were part of the OF top 10 uh, project as well. So from our, st our, our, our stats, if you look at the, uh, if you look at it, the local storage, pretty much 90, if 90, somewhere between 95 to 100 percent of the application we test, we something is stored into the local storage. So you you pretty much can see the uh, you can you you pretty much can see that the almost all application is storing data into the local storage. Then there is an, an information stored into the log file, uh, which is shared between all the application. The copy paste, the privacy issue, the copy paste has been not disabled. We pretty much find it in in almost like an 80, 85% of the application. And then the, the cross-site scripting and the SQL, sir, SQL injection has been, has been discovered at a lot of, uh, at lot of uh, application as well. So let's look at some of the enterprise cases on, and, uh, on what, has been, uh, what we have been finding. So this was a an, typical Android app, e-commerce application where the Android e-commerce e application allows you to perform the transactions. So in, in this case, uh, we found in credit card and private data information was actually stored into the local storage, but they were encrypting the file. Now, in Android, what they did is the encryption and decryption was happening on the client side itself. Now, the encryption key was actually part of the code because he has to keep the, the developer has to keep the code, the encryption and decryption token in as part of the code, otherwise he will not able to encrypt and decrypt the stuff. So by decompiling an Android application, it was possible to get an encryption and decryption token, and then you can pretty much get an access to the, uh, to the file stored into the local storage. And then they were leveraging a web view control, so it was possible to perform a cross-site scripting attack 
onto onto Ajax and uh, and then on the server side we we found uh, we did a SQL injection over a JSON. So uh, pretty much if you look at the all the attacks, so on the this is an example where it was a banking application. So your banking application would have a functionality which lets you which lets you see your past statements. Now your past statements are actually in a PDF format. So when the user actually clicks on past statements, the PDF gets downloaded and then your application has to, if you, your developer has two options. One is he writes his, uh, the PDF reader himself or he leverages the OS to and give a control of PDF to that OS, OS default PDF reader. Now, when the application actually hands over the control to the uh, hands over the control to the PDF reader, application doesn't know when the when the PDF has been closed. So there is just no way an application can remove that file. So here it was, uh, and then your statement would have all the transactions information, your social security numbers, and and all that information. So it was uh, it was stored into the local storage, and then. In iOS, the default behavior is to cache all the request and response in a, in a file called cache.db. So the cache.db file actually had all the request and response, including your login request. So ideally, you should be removing the cache.db file as well. This was a social application. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people use it, leverages HTML5 these days for mobile to, to have a common code base for all the platforms, uh, be it an Android or an or, or an iOS and whatnot. So this was an example where it was a social application, uh, social media application which leverages and an web view control on, on platforms. And uh, uh, it was possible to bypass and, and, and this application had functionality that it only allows you to, to have it installed on one device per phone number. Now, it was possible to you, if you just copy the entire local storage from a one device to another device, then entire account was actually replicated to another device. And then it was possible to leverage, uh, access the application on both the devices. So that pretty much, uh, that pretty much hurted the company because it was a direct financial impact to them because now they were not getting money for every download. The screenshots were stored in a local storage, which is again in default OS behavior. Uh, on the presentation layer, it was possible to do a cross-site scripting and, and SQL injection as they were leveraging in WebView control. And they were, they were sending that information in a in an plain text. They were not leveraging SSL. SSL. So if you do a post-mortem, pretty much uh, the, all the application, pretty much all the, all the application had one vulnerability in common, which was a local storage. So, and then the server side and the logical logical issues were were always hard to find, but it's always have the biggest impact, as as we all know. A lot of lot of time, the question comes like, why why the developer why the developer actually stores the information into the local storage? It's actually to provide an ease of information, ease of use for the user, or to gain in popularity. Or in mobile, everybody wants to achieve activity with, with a single click. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, in mobile, everybody wants to achieve a, a, a stuff with a single click. So, and you want to achieve the decrease. Uh, you want to achieve the, the tra you want to decrease the transaction time and, and that's why you want to keep the information into the local storage. I'm not saying you should not keep the information in local storage because the security has to always balance with the business requirement. And if you do not if you if being a developer, if you do not store the information into the local storage, you are not achieving the business requirement. Security cannot overcome the, the business requirement. What information you usually find into local storage? The authentication, uh, uh, authentication credentials, the authorization tokens, your financial statements, your credit card number, your private information like your, uh, like your social security numbers, uh, your social engineering sites, uh, your Facebook and Twitter accounts. 
uh, your owner's information, where I'm staying, where I'm living, and, and, and what is my phone number, and who is my wife, and, and what, what, my, what my kid's number is, and what not. And all the requests and response, which is sent from the client to the server in, in a typical uh, iOS application. So if we look at the, some of the demo, uh, so this is a first example is where So this is an Android application where it's an e-commerce Android application which allows the user to perform a standard like an purchasing stuff and whatnot. So this is a bookstore. I'm entering my credit card number into the application. to perform the transaction. Now, being a user, when I do this, I don't know what's actually happening behind it, whether it's storing it or not. But if you, if you go back and, and, and look at the application directory, the application directory actually contains an, an file, a database file called info.db, which actually got the, the, the credit card information stored in a plain text. This is just an example where I'm storing the information in a plain text, but a lot of time, uh, uh, we have seen an application which actually does a different kind of encoding or hashing the information before before storing it. So, uh, and that's why we have like a poor cryptography implementation in one of the one of the OAP's top ten list as well. If you look at the server side exploitation uh, from the mobile application, you're on the same application. When I send in, when I click on the app, when I click on the any any book, it actually is sending a JSON request. So here, if you look at the, the content length, the content length is 886. But then if I change the JSON to have or one equal to one, I'm gonna get all the, re all the results back. So now, if I hit go, the, the content length is 6,591. Uh, 6, that pretty much proves that it's, it's all the data. Now, a lot of time we 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 get a question that XSS is not exploitable in terms of mobile. Now, here is an example: how does an XSS can be exploited? So again, this is an HTML5 application where I have a search page within which has the XSS. Now. You get a pop-up. Now, what I have done is I have written in a small node.js script. What I have done is I have written in small node.js script, which actually st reads the file from the local storage of that application. So I'm going to hook. I'm going to start the the node.js script over here. So I started my Node.js script, and then I'm gonna inject the attack vector, which will send me the entire file onto my Node.js server, which is running on a, on a different machine. So it, it says client has been connected. Now if I go to, to text.test.txt, it has all the data which was stored from the local storage of that particular application. So with the XSS on the mobile, you, are, you can actually read the information from the local storage as well, which is, which is more, which has probably the more impact than the web where the user probably needs to click on the, on, on the XSS, uh, XSS link before you can exploit it. So what are the different threats? A lot of time the company ha company says that we have MDM in place. We don't allow only j uh, we don't allow in any jailbroken device or a rooted device from our MDM. Or we have strict policy enforced through an MDM which does not allow user to jailbreak the device or which forces user to have a password protection. Now so the so the questions are what attacker can do? What attacks are we talking about? The privacy, uh, it is mobile. At the end, the mobile device is prone to be a mobile. So it, the having an, uh, uh, the different exploitation scenarios are, first of all, the physical theft. 
in just last one year, there has been more than a million instances in just United States where the smartphones were stolen. The tem temporary physical access, even I can get in five access to your device for five minutes on an, on an iOS device, I can, uh, I can get the data using a tool called iPhone box or an, in an Android, I can just install ADB over Wi-Fi to get in your, to access your device remotely. You have a lot of malware and malicious application in law, uh, just in a recent recent uh, study uh, performed by uh, performed by an, uh, Virginia uh, Virginia Tech University. Google Marketplace itself has like an eight percent of the application which do, which has which does a malicious stuff. It's the lack of standardized standardized security review process. It's like, uh, I'm gonna talk about this as well. And then there is always a chance that the, the attacker can jailbreak the device if, if he gets in physical access to it. What are some of the other challenges? It's a review process. We all know that Apple reviews their, their application before coming into App Store, but do we know what exactly they're looking, what exactly they look for? We don't know, it's not, it's not transparent. It's very time consuming as well, so let's say I'm, I'm a developer and I have found a vulnerability. Now I have fixed it and then I have to send it to Apple so that Apple can release it. That particular, sending, fixing the vulnerability and sending it to Apple and releasing it takes actually good three to four weeks of a time. Google just recently started it. Google recently started reviewing the application but Again, the problem is same. It's very hard to catch up for them because there has been already a more than a million application in Google Marketplace. Not, not possible in BlackBerry at all because BlackBerry actually has started that they will natively support an, an app APK files. So now you can use any application from Google Marketplace on your BlackBerry devices. So how does an BlackBerry is gonna control what applications are, are, have been reviewed or not? They, they probably don't have any control over it. The another challenge is actually frequency of updates. If you look at the, the, pretty much on the web front, if you look at the life cycle of web application release, it's either three or four releases a year in terms of web application. If you look at the mobile application release cycles, it's very fast. If, if, I, if I show you some of the stats, this is the stat for 2013 where Facebook, so I don't know whether you guys can see it or not, but Facebook last year had like a 19 releases for iOS and 34 releases for Android. JP Morgan Chase Bank had like nine releases for iOS and two releases for Android. eBay had nine and four. Amazon had 10 and three. So pretty much if you look at the, and WhatsApp has like 24 and 54. So pretty much every four days you have a new version of WhatsApp in Android. So if you look at the, the release cycle, it's so much, higher compared to the uh, web application, it's even tough for any company to review the applications during that time or review the entire application or even a partial of the application because the pen tester will, pen tester will find the stuff, then the developer needs time to fix it and all that. When we are, lo when we are looking at even the, the 20, 10 applications, it's pretty much you are talking about an every release a month. So, how do you review the Android application? Android natively supports like in three type of storage. The internal storage, the external storage, and the, and the storage in a shared preferences. The internal storage is, is basically as part of the data data directory itself. The external storage is, is storage into the SD card. And then there's something called shared preferences. Now shared preferences is actually a file which is shared among, which can be shared with a different application if the other application has permission to access it. How to test? Is it very hard to test an Android application? It's very time consuming because what typically when you are doing a manual review in terms of any Android application, what you need to do is you need to capture the different state of the application. So you install the application, take the state. Then you open the application, log into the application, take the state. Then you perform another feature of the application, you browse through the another feature of the application, you take a state. 
and then you log out the application, you take a state of that, and then you close the application and you take out the state of that. And then the one has to compare each of the state to find out what has been stored at what, what functionality or what level into the application. So if I want to, if I can show you that, So this is an, an Android application. I'm trying to perform an, an review called internal storage demo. So I go to that directory. I do ADB pull. So I just installed the application and took a state back of that particular directory. And that has the token file, which has the value 28782. Now, so this is like you're copying everything and then you are reviewing stuff and then you open the application. Take a backup of this. Say backed up. Then you open the application again and do an ADB pull again. So now I enter the credential and log into the application. I have to do an ADB pull again to get the, the dump of after login. And now you see, now you start observing the data. Then you need to, so let's say my application has 10 different functionality, then I have to do this 10 times, and then I have to compare each of, each of that to come up with a conclusion whether the application is storing information into the local storage or not. It's very time consuming, it's tedious, it's very tedious, it's, it's not human who would do it accurately every time. It's prone to be false positive because if you're doing it repeatedly 10 times or 15 times based on the functionality of the application, you will end up missing, a, missing overlook some of the information and you will, not find, uh, for, you will not find stuff which is there into the, into, the, uh, into the local storage. So can we automate this? Yes, in, in terms of Android, Android actually provides you an API to monitor the file system. How many of you have used like a FileMon? A classy FileMon tool from SysInternal was very handy when you're testing a desktop application. Similarly, we have written a tool called FSDroid. It leverages an SDK, no hacks, nothing is required. It's an SDK code, you install this application, it monitors the file system. You can write filter on what directory you want to monitor you can save your last five reports. You actually don't need a mobile device at all. You can run it in an emulator as well. And it's very easy to run. Just, you just hit in one click. That was the previous version. The new version, which, uh, which I'm launching along with this talk, if you go to the website, you can download it. So earlier, one of the challenge was, a lot of time the application creates a new directory at the time of run. So when the application is running, if it was creating a new directory and storing the information as part of the new directory, the tool was not finding it. The new version now finds it. And then the permission has to be, uh, has to be assigned manually in previous version. Now the tool actually, you just, select the, you just select the application and the tool will assign a permission to that, uh, permission to that directory. So let's look at an FS droid in action. So on the left hand side, uh, this is on the right hand side. You have a previous version where I'm, let's say, monitoring the bookstore application. I hit before I hit start. I do assign and permission. So here you can see that there is no permission for com dot bookstore. Just to make it easy, I I just assign like seven seven seven. So now it has the per now everybody has the permission to look into that directory. You fire up the FS Droid again, and then 
you you just hit the start button now if i minim minimize this and then fire up the bookstore application and perform the different operation in bookstore now if i go back to F fs droid it will show you what directory is it has open and what directory it has co closed so now you know where to look for the information now in the newer version we have simplified this so in the newer version when you launch it when you go to config it shows you the list of application you just select the list of application and it assigns the permission you hit the start button and then perform the operation it will now actually show you which file has been modified as well so this is an, an an improvement into the engine where over here if you look at this it shows you that this file under data data com dot bookstore cache web view cache chrome staging is closed without any write so now you know that application is modifying or writing into which file so that is the uh, now it's more like an and complete file monitoring rather than rather than just giving you the hint in terms of ios ios doesn't provide you any of any any such apis to monitor the file system so we came up with a different idea ios basically have like a two type of storage internal storage and the keychain file I, nothing new than android pretty much you uh, you just go through the different files and directories and uh, to find the information and uh, uh, that's all the methodology is for the for the manual review so on a no, on a non jailed broken device the methodology is something different so if i show you a manual manual testing for the end for the ios it's more like an this is a dvd store application where i'm storing the information so it's a jail, on a jailbroken device it's pretty easy you ssh into the device and then go through the directory and and find the information stored into the local storage so i ssh into it and then go to this application directory find the stuff and on the non jail broken device what you need to do is there is a utility called ifun box so here i'm leveraging an iphone box to dump the data iphone box actually can dump the data f even if the the device is locked as well so over here you can say that the I test ipod has been connected and it shows me the list of the application installed into my ipod and then first of all i install the application using an iphone box so the application has been installed So now if i click on on that application directory application it will show me all the directories and files you can pretty much copy the the files from the the directory or open it right there to find the different information stored into the local storage now so now you don't need a jailbreak you don't need a jailbreak device to even perform a security review you can leverage the iphone box to to get an access to the local storage can we automate this answer is yes using an iapple scan the current version of iapple scan requires a jailbreak device because it actually connects to the to the device while performing an analysis the existing feature the previous version's feature is it it can look for a sensitive information it can tell you whether the particular file exists or not on a particular directory it can download the file if you want for a further analysis and it can run any third party external binaries like an keychain dumper or or anything else, any other, or a cookie dot binary cookie file to get an output of those third party tool the new version actually we added the poor cryptography in, uh, detection so now if you are if your target application is storing the information using any encoding mechanism or a hashing mechanism like a base 64 hacks 
URL encoding or HTML5 or JZIP, or in terms of hashing it, you, if it is leveraging MD5, SHA-256, uh, SHA-384 or SHA-512, uh, IAPLI scan can detect it. And uh, we have added a feature called load and save configuration for the future use. So if you look at the IAPLI scan, So you enter the, the credentials, it connects to the device. You select the application you want to review, and then select the location where you want to download the files. Enter the text which you want to search for, If you want to look for any particular file, if you want to see, let's say, whether the database file exists or not and whatnot, you can enter that and then hit run. That will show you all the, all the data. So this is the previous version. Now if you look at the newer version of iAppliScan, the newer version has, has more features. So now you connect to the device. You connect to the device, select the application name you want to review. Same, select the path where you want to download the stuff. Next, enter the same, enter the, enter the text you want to look for. It also supports the regular expression, so you can enter the regular expressions as well. Select the encoding and, and, and hashing mechanism you want to test for. And then if you hit run, it's going to find all the information. So from the previous one, this application actually stores base64 encoding. So it was not finding the word Jill, if you have observed the last time. Now it has been finding the Jill has been stored into one of the file as well as base64 encoding text. So uh, now you know that the application is doing two things. One is leveraging the poor cryptography uh, because they are encoding the stuff rather than encryption. And then you also know that th this particular information has, has been stored locally. So now I'm going to, let's say, I want to use the same config file, the same configuration for multiple scans. I can enter all the details and then save it for the later purpose. So there is an, a feature called save config. So let's say I want to just test that encoding. I don't want to try all hashing stuff. And then before running, there is an option called save config. So if I hit the save config option, it stores the information into the XML file. And then if I open the IAPLI scan again, it lets me load the config, Every, all the information would be there. So this, this pretty much becomes like a routine for my, my reviews, where now I don't have to enter all the text and everything again. All I do is, is load config. So if I just load the config, all the information would be there. So with, with both of th this tool, we are, we are trying to cover four different OAPs top 10. Uh, insecure data storage, security decision via untrusted inputs, uh, broken cryptography, and sensitive information disclosure. So out of 10, four of the OAPs top 10 attacks can be tested with this, with this tools.
The tools can be downloaded from our website, uh, esphere.security.com slash, slash resource tools. The other tools called dump droid, check debuggable, and, and an app code scan, uh, which is in like an, a semi-automated manual, semi-automated code review tool. Uh, you can find that as well. Uh, any questions you have? Is it on? Hi. Uh, what are the benefits of knowing where the data is located? So when you are doing a penetration testing, one of the checks is what information has been stored or at what places. Uh, because you are testing for, testing for the, testing for the what risk you are exposing off from your application. So you, as part of the testing, you would perform a test against what information has been what stored. What an attacker where. can do with, with these? Sorry? What an attacker can do with this information? What you can do with this information? The like attacker. What attacker can do, that really yeah. based on the based on the information you find. Let's say yeah. in your cache.db, I found a an username and password. Um, as far as I know, only the application that created the data has access to them in the Android. Yeah, so that's why one of, there were, I don't know whether you look, look at that side, slide or not, there were slide how the attacker can exploit it. So let's say I'm an attacker and you are a normal user. Let's say I get an access to your phone for a temporary purpose, let's say for a five minute or, or a 10 minute. I can hook that to my phone or hook that to my laptop, get all the data out of your phone you won't even notice that, and I'll give your phone back. And then I can use your information to, to become you. Oh. Yeah, that's the rather rare. Or, so that's one of the case. The another case is, let's say uh, your phone is stolen. I get a permanent access to your phone. Uh, rather rare occasion, I think. Sorry? It's a rare occasion, I think. It's very rare case, you think? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then the number, the number is pretty high actually in terms of smartphones. Very high compared to the classic phones. So you are pretty much you are pretty much questioning whether we should be worried about mobile application security or not, because. If the attacker cannot exploit it, why should I worry about it? Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of Android, let's say there are, I don't need an I don't need an access. If you are using an Android device, in the recent survey, in the recent study, there has been eight percent of the application into the marketplace itself, which is the malicious activity. So let's say. You have some application, you, you install some application from marketplace itself. I just thought that the other application, other applications, malicious applications, don't have access to the data that the other application wrote. That's what I thought. Sorry, I didn't get your question here. I thought that malicious applications don't have access to read the data of the other applications. But there are certain areas of the application. So let's say a paste board is shared amongst all the application. Or there is something called shared underscore preferences directory. Uh, on, only where they share them. Sorry? So it's exploitable only where they share this information via their shared directory. OS itself, yeah. To root at your to root your device, yeah. Ah. This way, yeah. Or, or let's say you have a copy paste enabled into sensitive fields. Mm -hmm. Now, when you hit the copy button, that gets written into the into the paste board, which is shared among mm -hmm. all the application. Mm -hmm. A malicious application okay. can just monitor the paste board to get an information to all this access, to get an access to all this information. Similarly, in Android, there is something called shared prefs directory. Now. If you store something into shared underscore prefs directory, there are three different type of permission. 
and the worst thing is by default the permission is allow all ideally allow none should be the permission but by default the permission is allow all so if you write anything under shared underscore preferences and if you do not assign permission to it then every other malicious application can read okay. that data as well thank you i got it now yeah <laughs> Sorry? 5% percent physical theft everywhere in the world. I was sure. going to say that's a lot of smartphones <laughs> 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 if you think about it. Um, now my question is more related to the data. You said some applications um, don't know when they've closed so that they don't actually tidy themselves up. Does your tool do anything looking at uh, how long that data resides with, you know, some applications may be a bit more savvy and actually clean themselves up afterwards. Does your tool look at how often, how long that data resides in the local storage? So, you know, it may write a piece of information then 30 seconds later get rid of it after it's been used. Or does it just assume that it's just looking for uh, written once and then just uh, doesn't look at what its state afterwards? No, so current version does not do it, uh, but in the that is that is the feature we are developing as we speak. Okay. Yeah, uh, for iOS. In terms of Android, yes it does, because yeah. Android is pretty much the FS Droid is a file system monitoring. So mm -hmm. when you're actually gonna delete it, it is going to capture the event that, okay, you have deleted this file at this particular time as well. Does, it, does that tie it back to the original application that launched it? Because obviously you could have a malicious piece of software that says, hey, I've just got that piece of information, then deletes, deletes it from the, the original uh, application that was using it. Yeah, so it, it, can, it actually does it for the directory you choose to do it. So okay. uh, when you actually fire up this FS Droid, it prom it it prompts you what directory you want to monitor. Right. And then if that malicious application is doing it as part of that directory, yep. then yes, it will do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got you. Cool. <laughs> Could one solution to the problem be that every time a mobile app writes to a data store, it encrypts? And every time it reads from that data store, it decrypts. So any malicious person wouldn't be able to make sense of it. Or is it just making life too complicated? Uh, in, in which platform you are doing it, that's, that's a good question. Because in terms of iOS or an Android or, or for any mobile platform, it would be possible to get this, your encryption and decryption string. So the current solution for which we give it to our customer is what you do is you in, and we are not saying you do not store the data. You have to store the data because that is what the business requirement is. Now, you do not store any private or a sensitive data like in credentials. And even if you want to do it, what you do is you store it encrypted. Do not perform any decryption on the client side. Take the encrypted data, send it to the server because whenever there is a login, you need to validate with the server. So, take the encrypted data, send it to the server, let the decryption happen on the server side, validate the authentication, and then come back. If you perform the both encryption and decryption on the client side, that's when the problem starts. Blackberry, yeah. Sorry? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, pretty much the behavior is, is almost same. Uh, in terms of Windows, I think, uh, although the stat says 2%, if, if I look at the review pr from, from the review perspective, uh, I would say if we are doing like a 50, 55 application review a month, we see like one or two application, maybe one application which is a Windows application. But there has been, there has been effort on to the Windows mobile application development as well. So they're catching up. Uh, the, the other category is, is, is more like a smart TV application, let's say. Samsung smart TV has, has an ability to write an application. Your LG has the ability. Sony has the ability. 
Then there are like devices like Roku devices and Hulu devices and whatnot in US. All those will fall under the, the other categories. All right, thank you guys. Thank you.